We all talk about cities a lot, but do we really understand cities? We need to find a way to better understand cities and there where they are really important, where they are really growing. This is why we founded a research lab in Singapore, in the fastest growing region of the world. And we try to combine science, as you see science, a happy president, happy National Research Foundation, and design, you will see Case Christiansa later. You're looking here at, at the moment, the most sought after website, if you look at the Future Cities title, you will find this website, number one, number two, all the way down. And it shows that Future Cities design is really a complex way of designing. It's a complex system. And we try, therefore try to understand the city as a complex system. A city has a metabolism. It's not an organism, but it has a metabolism. And in this metabolism, it can look very simple, like the stocks and the flows of a city can look very simple, like this city from the top in Sudan, uh, where the humans have to adapt to the harsh conditions. <clears throat> On the other side, it can be very sophisticated. Here we have, of course, a supercomputer part, and that sometimes starts to look like a city, because computers are sometimes organized like cities inside. So this dualism between humans and computers, between data and real life is very important. Let's look into some of the original stocks and flows of the city which are important. Here a wonderful example from Myanmar. You see the totally balance between city and landscape, between houses and landscape, in this case of the water. The water has a stock, the lake, and it has a flow, the inflow and outflow. But you can also transport that to modern cities here in Zurich, a beautiful new building by Shigeru Ban, a very headquarters of a, of a media company. And you can see use of wood, a sustainable material combined with high-tech concrete in a high-tech new building. So this is something we strive at, at the building level, but also at the level of the city quarter, the next higher level. Here you see how the stocks and flows of energy, for example, on our campus in Zurich, this is the Science City campus, Hönkeberg, we store the energy from the summer in the ground and take it out in the winter using the stocks and flows of energy and the storage capacity of the world. In this case, you see the stocks and flows of information and it starts, the flow of information, of communication, starts to transform the city and it takes over some of the visual aspects of the city. This is something we're trying to avoid in many places, but sometimes it's not avoidable. It's an important part of understanding a city. And it can go even further, the stocks and flow of transportation sometimes even destroy almost the fabric of a city and we have to be very careful in predefining the stocks and flows of transportation through measures, as you will see in the next presentations, um, that it can be done in a way that is more human scale. And you can use the stocks and flows even on a landscape and on a large territorial scale. This is Singapore, and we use digital um, maps, of course, old maps and new maps to show you what is new, which is all black, and what is white, which is, has been taken from the island to be filled into the land. To do all these things and to store the data that we get with all these applications, we need lots of energy, electricity in this case. You can generate electricity in many different ways. This will be one of the major uh, focus areas in the future cities where we have the data stores and where we have the electricity sources. Here it's in the uh, East Sea, of the, uh, in the North Sea. And we need this to store all these data that we get from these handheld devices, these big data that have been produced. Each one of you who's wearing one of those is producing part of these big data that go somewhere. This is an example from Zurich, and we can see how people concentrate in certain areas. Then we can use this big data, bring it down to the level of urban planning, and we visualize what these big data mean on the urban uh, level, on the model of the urban level. You can see even children can interact with that. So in a city scale, model in a city scale laboratory, we can handle all these things. We can handle the energy, which you can see represented here of Singapore, the individual buildings, how much energy they use. We can present it to uh, ministers, as in this picture, or we can present it to children and all the people in between. This is the important part that you understand these stocks and flows, the working of the city. 
and the big data finally come back to very small things, to very haptic things, where we designed the city with blocks, but intelligent blocks also, again, between children and all the, share, the share, shareholders. And you will also see on the right side a simulation, in one of the later presentations, how this bridge from the high-tech to the low-tech is done. The big question for us is we can do these things in the lab, in the city now. How can we bring this knowledge, these functioning future scenarios, into places where it's really needed. That means in the places around the equator, where 90% of the new cities are emerging, not just the big cities, but also the small cities.